Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the McGonagall Boxing Podcast. Let's get straight down to it, shall we? So what next for both fighters? Dylan White, Tyson Fury. And what do we make of Dylan White's comments that he got pushed, he got shoved down, and the only reason why he lost that fight to Fury was because of the push. Because ultimately that's what concussed him on the way down. The referee should have given him time to recover. Uh, he's one second away from the seventh round. He would have recovered. And ultimately, Fury should have been deducted points. Um, we'll address these issues. For now, uh, what's next for White? I've heard a lot of things that he needs to rebuild. He needs to go down maybe to European level to get his confidence back um, before a certain one more shot the world title. And let's, let's make no mistake about it. A 34... Uh, come up to you know 35 he's going to probably have one more shot the title but uh will he get back up to that contention level i mean he waited three four years for his for this shot uh and ultimately didn't deliver so i don't know is the question will he has he got the heart the desire to to go again drop down a level and rebuild um or is he going to risk it all again because he'll still be probably in the top five rankings um, is he going to have a gunslinger fight with a Joyce, a Dubois, a Parker again? Personally, I'd like to see him have a one huge payday of Chisora. I mean, the, both of them fights have been classics. It's set out the O2 Arena, great payday. Uh, both similar age and similar ability and then right off into the sunset. But uh, I think White's talking about wanting to rebuild and go again. He wants one more shot. So, you know, good luck to him. It's going to be a hard, long road back now. But uh, I've heard many opinions. And when I read um, a respected article about White should retire, at first I was like, don't be stupid. He's 34 years old. He's in, his, in many ways, his peak. He's better if you take uh, the Joshua fight back in 15 or the Chisora first fight in 16 he's physically much stronger much better condition much better cardio technically he's better um, he's got better setup shops he's got a better jab ring generalship even better defence compared to the rough tough brawler he was that just knew his physicality let's be honest in his early careers to get the wins so he's a much better athlete now and he trains properly and obviously he takes himself out to Portugal with a real camp and he's got his trainers Avi Miller who pretty much lives with him during them them camps so he does everything, everything professionally now and of course financially he's far more secure uh, to get the better resources, nutritionists and facilities rather than his early career. But the one thing he hasn't got now, if you look back on the Chisora fight where he was going toe for toe, blow for blow, even Joshua taking clean hard shots against a young, hungry, strong, confident Joshua, or even the Parker fight, or the Lanus who's a big giant, he was taking flush shots and he kept coming. Now, since the Povetkin fight, which is a horrendous knockout, let's be honest, that uppercut back in 2020, his punch resistance gone. I mean, let's be honest, I mean, Fury sort of played with him a lot, but what he did do is he had three, fight, three big shots, and every time, every time Fury caught him with a body shot, he winced in pain and he even said to Fury, you've got me there, you hurt me there. And, and, and Fury made that post-fight press conference. He caught the right, oh, right hand, and you saw his legs buckle in the fourth. And I called it. I was watching the fight live. I said, "This fight's over soon." And then, of course, the uppercut, three power shots, wobbled him twice, iced him in the third one. His punch resistance is going. Now, don't get me wrong. We all know Fury's increased his power. Uh, you know, he's more aggressive now. He's a big lump. I'm not saying that, but. You know, if you can, he doesn't punch harder than Joshua, um, and he certainly probably doesn't punch with the the spite of a Jazora. And you know, White was taking his punches flush, so his punch resistance has gone downhill. Um, and that's not a place you want to be at 34 when you're coming up against the giants and the lions of Joe Joyce, Daniel Dubois, you know, even Parker now with much improved under Andy Lee. You know, these are guys are, are savages. They're hungry, hungry lions. Um, and if they catch White, which they've seen 
now get knocked out in two of his last three fights. They're going to be looking at their lips because he's a name, he's a payday, um, and they know he's vulnerable. So he's got a lot to think about. I would personally like him to have one big fight against Chisora. Big money. Chisora's still an attraction. He's, he's a folklore hero, especially after his wars with Parker. Uh, even though he lost, added to his credibility. One big payday, a bit like Karn and Brook. You know, it's a spectacle, not a, a world-class fight anymore, but a real spectacle. And then right off to the sunset, because it's a long road back for White now. And I just don't see any improvements, I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I compare, of, of course, 2022 to 2015 is massive, but what I'm saying is improvements in terms of when he's under Mark Tibbs. There's none. It actually, he's regressed. I don't think he should have ever left Mark Tibbs. Mark Tibbs loved Dillian White. He cared for him. He knew he stole. He knew how to get the best out of him. He was tough on him, but he's honest. I wonder, under Xavier Milliot, does White call the shots? Is he dictating the terms? Is there to me yes men around him? Because, you know, I saw White being extremely passive against Fury. And yes, I get it. Fury's awkward. And he was countering White a lot, and that will make you hesitate. But under Tibbs, you can bet your bottom dollar. Look at how he fought Parker. Look how he fought Rivas under Tibbs. Riz, Riz, Tibbs knew that White wasn't the slick boxer. He wasn't going to stand off and, and fight distance. He was rough and tough and physically, you know, imposing. He'd be on Fury's chest. He'd try and rough him up. It, it'd been far more of a threat under Tibbs. He would have fought his fight. You know, he tried to, at times, stand off against Fury. I'm like, why is he trying to out-jab Fury? Why is he trying to be too patient? He barely threw at times, and then when he did throw in desperation, he was miles off. I just didn't see a game plan, which Tibbs always gave White. He always played to White's strengths. I mean, why is he going southpaw when he's nobody boxed ever southpaw, especially against someone who can switch it like Fury? It just seemed madness to me. I don't know what Xavier Miller has brought to Dillian White apart from keeping him in shape, which, of course, Tibbs did. Tibbs got him into career best shape, and I think he's just maintained that. But under Tibbs, he, you know, he gave him proper nutritionist, he gave him proper training camp, and I think Xavier Miller's just maintained that, nothing more. So, does he need a new trainer? Maybe. Maybe he needs to get away from these yes-men. He hangs around with his friends and his brother. Maybe he needs to get away to the States. I don't know. But clearly, his training camps aren't working right now, and there's not been any improvement. And actually, there's been regress with tactically. So I think a new trainer, if he's going to give it one more go, like he says, he needs to seriously look at getting a world-class trainer who's not going to take any crap, he's not going to be dictated to, he's not going to be dealing with white calling his shots, but he'll sit back and listen. Get rid of his entourage. I mean, at that way, in about 50 people, who are these guys? Hangers on, you know? He's had a career payday under Fury. And, um, you know, so financially he's set. So, you know, is the hunter going to still be there, really? I hope so. But uh, he needs big changes. He needs, he needs to go back. A bit like Joshua needs to go back when fighting Jusic for the second time. White needs to go back or brought him to the dance. Use his imposing physical strengths. Play to his strengths. Get that left hook in play. Get more busy with a jab. Sell it up. Get on their chest. Be a Joe Fraser. Get on their chest and unleash. Let your hands go. But it just was non-existent against Fury. And that's why so many people are so disappointed with White's performance. And then not to take ownership of it. Uh, you know, and accept that, listen, I've got a problem with uppercuts. I've been knocked out by Joshua. I got wo wobbled by Brivas. I got wobbled by Parker. I got knocked out by Povetkin and now Fury. Fury knew that. Um, the uppercut was there. So he needs a trainer who's going to help him defend that, not lean in so much and be susceptible for that with the counter. That's what he should be working on, these things. And I just think he needs a new trainer to develop that. As a Fury, will he retire? I hope not. I think at the moment he means what he says. I think he's got a massive payday. What has he got? 30 million in the bank from that fight. You know, and he's already a millionaire. So I get it. The hunger, you know, will start waning. But I think Fury needs boxing to keep him his mental state healthy. I think it gives him purpose. It gives him respect. And I just think at the moment he means it. But 
as a month or two goes down the line, especially when Usyk and uh, Joshua fight. I think when that comes out, the winner, and no doubt they're calling his name, the media will be clamoring for it. I don't think he can resist it. I really don't. I think he will come out and fight the winner of Joshua Usyk for unification. I think that's a huge money fight. That does even bigger numbers than the white. I think that will be huge, huge money. I know he says it's not about money, but, you know, come on. You can't turn this kind of money down. That will set him, not just him and his children up, but the, the next generation after that, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. So uh, I think he will have one more, possibly two. Maybe rematches as well, but he'll definitely, I think, go for that unification. And if he wins that, then there's no argument. He's in the top ten all-time heavyweights. I think he is already. He's six foot nine. He can box. He can brawl. He's game. He's smart. He's got cardio for days. He gets up when he gets knocked down. I mean, he's got it all. Tyson Fury can switch it. Great movement. Yes, he's slowed down a little bit with his footwork. He's not the, the ridiculously dancing king he was against Klitschko back in 2015, but he's still quick enough, still elusive, reflexes like a cat, total self-confidence in himself. He's a top 10 heavyweight, I'm telling you now. I would back him against many, many of the heavyweights. And just the top five would maybe get to him. Um, I think prime Mike Tyson would be would be tough even though there's a massive size difference, I think speed and ferocity, but I think I think um, someone like Holmes hasn't got the stature to beat Tyson. He's not a big puncher, Holmes, in his prime. He's a great jabber, but so is Fury. He's got a longer reach. He's a bigger man. I just think he'd get to Holmes. I really do. Um, you know, it's only Tyson, Ali, Joe Lewis, the all-time greats, and, of course, their resume and the Hall of Fame fighters they've beaten that rank above um, Fury for me and he, there's a potential there for saying that uh, Lennox Lewis as well I just think he'd be too too big Fury too strong for Holyfield even though you know it'd be an awkward fight of course he would I think he'd box I think he'd box Holyfield's head off a bit like Lewis did in the first fight um, so he's a top tenner off for me as far as I'm concerned and I won't back down from that but I think he gets his unification fight. He beats the winner of Usyk or Joshua. Wins that, then it cements it. There's no question. And he ends as an undisputed champion of the world. And that really is some legacy. But uh, as for why, I think, you know, these comments were disappointing, weren't they, on Sky Sports the other day? Ironically, on Sky Sports and not BT. I think Warren said he won't get a rematch. He doesn't want anything to do with why. He can't blame him after the... The, you know, the, the, the media ban that he posed, the silence, he didn't advertise his fight hardly at all. Um, and, you know, and Warren found him hard work. Phew, he probably doesn't want to go through that again. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, you know, like, Fury, um, you know, pretty much, let's be honest, carried this fight through on his own until the last two days the final press conference and the, and the way in um, you know career payday for White I think you know an 80-20 split was justifiable you know Fury is the name he's the undefeated champion he hasn't been knocked out recently um, and he's still got an, you know what a 6 million payday by far like 3 times as much as any of his career high purses and he sold out Wembley and he's on US major TV in the States and the SPM. What more could you want for Dillian White? So, um, but I think he needs to take ownership. He can't be saying, yes, I mean, maybe the push wasn't ideal, but you know, it wasn't the reason why he lost the fight. He was still going down on that uppercut. And even if he got up, he was in such a bad daze. And he was getting beaten by this point. He was exhausted. That's what did for him. He was exhausted and he took it flush. But he'd be knocked out in the next round. So he needs to go away and take ownership. I know it's a bit like Wilder coming out after after his defeat. It's raw. Fighters have got great pride. But to get better, he needs to take ownership and realise he needs to, A, go back to his strengths. He needs to get up in their chest. He needs to let his hands go more. He needs to... to to get, you know, what brought him to the dance and use that left hook, use the jab and then the left hook. And he needs to also be careful, you know, when he is up close and personal, he needs to find ways to, to watch out for that uppercut. You know, whether he's either right on the chest or he's making not sure he's not fully committed 
when throwing. Um, you know, he he punches and then back back to um, you know his his, his defensive stance because that uppercut. The problem is when he throws and misses it, he's just wide open to be counted at the moment. So he needs to work on that. He's leaning too far in uh, when throwing, and that that you know looking for that right hand haymaker. Um, so he needs to address that because four knockouts. Sorry, three knockouts, nearly four with Parker. Uh, you know, he needs to address it now. The uppercut is what's doing for him. And until he addresses that, he's not going to get to uh, to world-class status. Because let's be honest, he's got outclassed and overmatched on Saturday night. So I hope he takes ownership. I think he needs to take a hard look at himself. I think he needs at least, at least five months out of the ring to recover. He has a bad knockout. On, on Saturday and then I, I would like to see him move on uh, with a new trainer I'd like to see him rebuild start the European fight then a fringe world level fight then a genuine top top 8 ranking fighter and then a top 5 and then hopefully another world title shot but you're looking at a year and a half before that comes so how much will he regress by then I don't know will he improve does he want to do that? Because that's what he needs. We're going to find out in the next couple of months, aren't we? We're going to find out with Fury as well about whether this retirement is permanent or not. At the moment, I, I fully believe what he says, but I just think when that Usyk and Joshua fight rings and he gets called out afterwards, it'd be too good to resist. So I think you'll have one more Fury. And I just hope why stops with these... He almost sounding bitter, isn't it? He pushed me. He did that, that. He tries before he gets away with it and takes ownership that he needs to get better. Needs to develop defence against the uppercut and needs to go back to fighting his fight. You know, rough, tough, use a left hook. Don't stand off and try and have jabber, jabber. And certainly don't try and go southpaw when you've never used that before. Madness. Lots to think about for both Fury and White. All right, guys. I'll see you soon.